God's provision of the crossing, we have to first write it down. We have to first experience God. I'm going to pick up Joshua 3 and verse 5, and let's just read there the first uh, 13 verses, because what we're going to see first underneath experience God is, I want you to write down, we need to experience God's vision. We need to experience God's vision. Joshua 3, I'm going to pick it up in verse 5, and go to verse 13. If I go farther, somebody please stop me. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel so that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites who will all be out of sight. That's the new, new living translation. See the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. The ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth, including the Jordan, including whatever is before you now. Now then choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, they're getting something across to us here, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. To experience God, first we need to experience God's vision that he cast through Joshua and Joshua cast to the people, that they were going to take a step of faith and God would provide. Verse 5 says, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things. God's casting his vision that they may know, verse 9, that I am with you, Joshua, as I was with Moses, that they may know and that you will know that the living God is among you and he will certainly drive out your enemies, verse 10 know to experience God. Know in Hebrew and know in Greek is to experience God. It's not mere mental ascent. It's this experience, this intimate, deep, deep, deep innermost part of my heart experience with the deep innermost part of God's. Now, it's interesting. The Bible says that Christ is the vision of God. If we're to experience God, we need to experience first his vision. And Christ is the vision of God. Look at what it says in uh, Hebrews 12.2. Hebrews 12.2 says, let us fix our eyes on who? Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, got his own crossing, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He's the light of the world. God has designed it so that the vision for our lives would be Christ. Not a particular job per se, although he can call you in and give you a vision for a particular career. Not necessarily to be rich, not necessarily to be poor. Not necessarily for times to be good, to be bad, to be mediocre, but for my heart to be shaped like Christ, Romans 8, 29. God has designed it so that everything in my life, his vision for my life is to have my heart, my innermost being, experience the heart of the living God in Christ and have my heart shaped, my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions, my, my choices, that they would all be experienced and shaped and molded into the heart of Jesus Christ. And so whatever it is you're facing today, Whatever that Jordan River is, don't forget that the God who parted that Jordan River and the God who you might have forgotten in this moment is the same God that bridged the gap of sin and death. He bridged the gap of sin and death, the Jordan River of sin and death, the seemingly insurmountable, no, the insurmountable gap of sin and death that we could never fill for ourselves. God in Christ bridged that gap, and whatever you're facing today, it's not that big. It's not as big as the gap of sin and death. And I want you to write down right now where you were or what the circumstances were or just a reminder of that point in time where you crossed over. I want you to remember your crossing and when you crossed over from death to life, when you took your step of faith into the waters that Christ had bridged for you, that you took that step of faith toward Christ. Write it down right now. The, the moment, you know, I was nine years old when I surrendered my life to Christ as Savior and Lord. And had I not... I couldn't remember when I was 26 years old on what a mess my life had become. 
I would have nothing to remember because I had first not experienced God's vision for my life. And his vision for my life wasn't to be rich, wasn't to be poor, wasn't to be smart, wasn't to be stupid. It was to be shaped like the heart of Christ. And that's what his vision is for you. And I want you to remember right now, when you took that step of faith and crossed over from death to life, write down something that reminds you of that. Second, to experience God, we need to experience not only God's vision, but we experience that it's followed by God's provision. Write it down, that it's followed by God's provision. In this Hebrew literary style, I believe that they're telling us the story uh, virtually two times, much like the creation story is told twice to us. So I'm going to read to you Joshua 3, 14 through 17, and then I'm going to jump to Joshua 4, verses 10 through 18, and um, hopefully that'll make sense to you. Joshua 3, verses 14 through 17 will come on the screen. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. That means that it's at least a mile wide. It's at least 100 feet deep. Uh, there's a drop of 200 feet, seven miles to each side getting there. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. And it piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarathon, while the water flowing down to the Sea of Arabah, the Salt Sea, the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who had carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while all Israel passed by until the whole nation, the whole nation, two and a half million people probably, had completed the crossing, not on muddy, not on slushy ground, but on dry ground. Chapter 4, verses 10 through 18. Now the priests who carried the ark remained standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything the Lord had commanded Joshua was done by the people, just as Moses had directed Joshua. The people hurried over. (laughs) I think I would have hurried over. Because I was thinking about how tall, you know, if the water's 100 feet deep, when you're passing by, even though it might be a distance away, it's probably at least 100 feet tall, probably three times the height of this facility. Come on, kids, let's go. I I saw at the Red Sea, the Egyptians drowned, you know. I saw earthquakes where it swallowed up people. Let's get across, you know. It's kind of funny. They hurried. It's funnier to me than it is to you. (laughs) Verse 11. Verse 11. And as soon as all of them had crossed, the ark of the Lord and the priests came to the other side while the people watched. The men of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh crossed over, armed in front of the Israelites who were getting ready for battle. As Moses had directed them, about 40,000 armed for battle crossed over before the Lord to the plains of Jericho for war. That day the Lord exalted Joshua, his provision followed his vision, in the sight of all Israel, and they revered him all the days of his life just as they had revered Moses. Then the Lord said to Joshua, command the priests carrying the ark of the testimony, oh, you know what testimony means? It means reminder. It means reminder. The ark is mentioned 17 times in, I think, 41 verses. Just about every other verse mentions the ark. It was the picture of God's presence. It housed the Ten Commandments. It was the ark of the testimony, a reminder that God's vision is followed by his provision. Command the priest carrying the ark of the testimony to come up out of the Jordan. So Joshua commanded the priest to come up out of the Jordan, and the priest came up out of the river carrying the ark of the covenant of the Lord. No sooner had they set their feet on the dry ground than the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and ran at flood stage as before. God's vision is followed by his provision. To remember the crossing, I first need to experience God, and I need to experience that God's vision is followed by his provisions. God's vision for my life is Christ. God's provision is Christ. This is so interesting. Look at uh, Romans 5.17. Romans 5.17 is where we learn that Christ is the provision of God. He's not just the vision of God, he's the provision of God. 